Hello again, I am Blunty, and while making this video, I accidentally dropped my CPU, which smooshed up a bunch of its pins. This is a very high-end, very expensive CPU, and I was heartbroken. Luckily, I managed to save it with the use of a craft blade and a macro adapter lens for one of my cameras and stuff. So, I don't know, maybe I earned a thumbs up for my determination or something, or just out of pity. Maybe leave a comment if you've got a story about an accidentally nearly destroyed CPU. <sighs> but I did fix it, and all is well. So here's the video. Now, a few weeks ago, I rebuilt and upgraded the ITX gaming rig I use for streaming, VR, and things like GPU benchmarking. Along the way, upgrading to a fancy new motherboard from Gigabyte and a screamingly fast Gen 4 M.2 storage option. I also swapped cases, in part so I could have a front panel USB-C connector and partly because I was thinking about moving it to water cooling and the previous case just wasn't big enough for that. And as luck would have it, when I was talking to them about the motherboard, Gigabyte also asked if I wanted to check out their shiny new upgraded WaterForce X water coolers they were just about to release. So here we are. This is the Aorus WaterForce X240, and at first glance it is a pretty standard 240 cooler, but it has a few extra bells and whistles too. They've built it with a new high-performance pump, which, yes, is very, very quiet. On top of that pump and copper plate water block sits something we've been seeing become a little bit of a trend in a few high-end all-in-one water cores recently, a screen. In this case, a 60mm circular LCD capable of serious stuff like status display or fun stuff like animated GIFs and even video. There's a few other really clever touches here too, but we'll have to come back to that in a second. Also here are some of Gigabyte's low noise graphene nano lubricated ARGB fans with translucent blades so the light glows all the way through them, which is neat. Also among their bullet list of standout performance features are things like enlarging the tube diameter to allow more coolant flow, ceramic axles for the fans for long life, and even a tidier cable management solution. It is designed with high-end performance in mind, advertised as tested with the brutal monster that is the Ryzen 9 5950X with all cores at 4.6 GHz, and alongside the usual Intel and AMD AM4 mounting hardware you'll find with almost every cooler on the market right now, the Aorus even comes with Threadripper mounting hardware. That was an interesting surprise. My main rig is a Threadripper, and usually you have to order bespoke coolers for them. In any case, this cooler is going on top of my 12-core, 24-thread Ryzen 9 3900X. Until now, I've been running it with the stock AMD Wraith Prism, and unlike Intel's hilarious stock coolers, <laughs> seriously Intel, really, AMD's inbox coolers are actually very good. It's relatively quiet, very serviceable, and even looks nice. But being a YouTuber and streamer means I very often need this thing running while I record, which also means I need to run the fans even slower and even quieter than an average user may be happy with. And for that purpose, a water cooler offers more flexibility and better, more consistent, more stable cooling at low fan RPM. So, to put all of this in perspective of temperatures, at idle, on a pleasantly warm t-shirt and shorts kind of day, at idle, I'd sit at about 60 degrees or so with the Wraith cooler. And after 15 minutes under full 100% extreme load in a Prime 95 stress test, I'd settle in at just under 90 degrees. And that's well within the safe zone for this CPU, but it is pretty toasty, and rather more importantly here, the clock speed has been pulled just below stock even to make sure it doesn't get too hot. And you can forget about turbo or precision boosting. So while it's silent enough and cool enough, I am giving up performance here, and my gamer brain wants those big numbers. It needs those big numbers. And I know you guys feel me on this. So, with the Waterforce X240 installed now, my new idle temperature sees a huge improvement, down to around 45 degrees or so. And this was even at slightly higher ambient temperatures too, because this was later in the day, after I'd installed it, of course. And under the Prime 95 test? Well, it's massive. Temperature is now below 60 degrees and stable there, after a full 15 minutes of cooking under 100% load. And even better news, we're getting those boosted clock speeds sitting happily at 4.17 GHz. That's a 15% boost over the suppressed clocks we had to deal with with the stock cooler. And we're doing it at a 50% decrease in heat. Significantly faster, significantly cooler. Beautiful. And all of this without the fans being ramped up at all, so the whole rig is still as silent, in fact it's a little quieter, than it was before. So, colour me impressed. And speaking of colour, 
seamless segue. The fans ARGB bring with it all the fancy programmable color cycling and chasing modes you would expect. Frankly, I never use these modes. I find flashing or moving lights in my peripheral vision while trying to game or whatever to be pretty distracting, but you know, they're here for those of you who do like that sort of stuff. And each fan's lighting cable can daisy chain into other fans or ARGB light strips so you can sync your whole case lighting easily without needing any extra splitters or whatnot. But in this day and age, an ARGB fan isn't that special, is it? So now let's talk about the real party piece, that screen. On the one hand, it can be just a cute little novelty. You can go simple and just have some custom text up there. If you've got it, you can whack your own branding up there in an image or get clever with a GIF or even a video. 100 internet points for anyone who gets this little gag. I thought I was pretty clever. <laughs> There's limited onboard storage of videos, but if you want longer and therefore larger video files to be able to play, you can in fact expand the onboard storage with a micro SD card. Now that's a thoughtful addition. Or it can do functionally useful things like report on your current loads and temperatures and fan speeds and pump speeds and any combination thereof in a couple of different display styles as well. Or there's another option called Chibi Time, which is some bizarre passive virtual corporate mascot pet thing. No, I don't understand why someone got asked to build this either, but I bet they find it hilarious they got paid to do this. And if you're wondering about orientation, by the way, don't. The screen can physically rotate so you can correct for whatever angle you've decided to mount your cooling plate in. And I'm not entirely sure why this was seemingly easier and cheaper to engineer physically than simply having the software compensate by rotating the image on the screen. But hell, it works perfectly and is in fact a very satisfying, clever bit of engineering. So whatever, I can appreciate it for that. Now, personally, I find a nice, quick, glanceable display of the load and temperature to be most useful to me, especially while gaming, as you don't even need to tab away to a program to see if, for example, the CPU load is likely why you're seeing performance hitch or something. But I also have a Gigabyte GPU in this rig as well, whose lighting and such is controlled through the exact same app as this cooler's functions are. And if I had one wish, it would be to be able to see GPU load and temperature on this display as well as CPU load and temperature. Currently, that's not an option. Don't know why, seems like a bizarre omission. But with a bit of luck, maybe that functionality will come in an update down the line somewhere. All in all though, I'm very impressed. Plenty of style points and customization options is always welcome. It looks nice and clean. The new cable management works nicely. But of course, that's all useless fluff unless the performance is there. And it is. I saw huge improvements in temperature at idle and under extreme loads while giving me back my boosted clock speeds well above what they were reaching with a stock caller and all while being even quieter. The Aorus Waterforce X240 promises a high-end experience. And of course, in the marketing fluff, they say it's built with reliability and long life in mind, because of course they would say that. Of course, I'll have to wait and see whether it delivers us on those promises. But I've literally, literally never had a Gigabyte product just fail on me so far. So I'll happily give them the benefit of the doubt on this one. I do expect it to be very reliable and very long life. For now, first impressions, I am very happy with its looks, very happy with its sound, or more accurately, lack of sound, and very, very happy with its performance. Easy recommendation. Check it out if you're in the market for a nice, high-end, all-in-one water cooler. Thank you very much for watching. I am Blunty, and of course, a special thank you to the patrons who are currently scrolling up above there. I do appreciate your above and beyond support. To the rest of you, thank you at least for making it to the end of the video. Hopefully along the way, you've done the thumbs and the subs and the bells and all that sort of stuff to help me out here on the YouTubes.